Hi friends, as always I am very excited to see you here. If you are meeting for the first time, I am Uma Shankar Pandey and this is the Dr. USP channel. I host videos on media, communication, research and statistics on this channel. To stay updated with the latest on this channel, I urge you to consider subscribing to the channel. Digital media, which was also known as new media earlier, is different from the old traditional media in many ways. From the one to many paradigm of old media, the digital media has moved to many to many communication. Let's see digital media explained in this video. There are three different ways in which we can theorize technology and society. One of them is technological determinism which suggests that technology determines how we behave. Then we have the social construction of technology. And finally, we have co-production of technology and society perspective. Digital media is identified with interactivity, convergence and pervasiveness. It is impacted by algorithms. New media was used to describe information and communication technologies based on the digital code. It emerged during the 1990s. The term new media distinguished it from old media, which is the traditional mass media like television, newspapers or radio. New also implied a linear view of the evolution of the media. New media is based on processing information in the digital format. They carry information represented by a numeric code, which is 1 and 0, and then transform it into human language. Analog media instead rely on continuous scales like the scale of colors that can be represented by the chemical composition of a piece of celluloid film for example. On digital media, different types of content, written, audio, visual, etc. converge onto a single platform. Computers are universal machines that can mimic other machines. This means that the production and consumption of different kinds of media content can happen on a set of machines such as computers, digital cameras or smartphones represented by the same binary code. Interactivity is regarded as the defining feature of digital media. Downs and Macmillan define different dimensions of interactivity, which is the direction of communication, flexibility about time and roles in the exchange, having a sense of place in the communication environment, level of control in the communication process, and perceived purpose of interactivity. Hypertext is another defining feature of digital media. On the World Wide Web, hypertexts are a fundamental feature that link one web page to another. This way, digital media allows users to enjoy content in a non-linear fashion. One does not need to consume content in a linear fashion on the digital media you can jump from one content to another. Traditional mass media are centralized and unidirectional. Digital media are instead characterized by a distributed model. The internet, for example, is composed by thousands of interconnected nodes. The means for information production and distribution are in the hands of individuals who communicate horizontally. Digital media allow people to access and post information at any time and from any location. It allows companies to track user behavior at an unprecedented scale. This makes it possible to produce and exchange information which is specifically related to the place and time of use, like in the case of Google Maps and map tracking. Most digital media services use algorithms. These are programs that follow procedural logics in order to generate specific outputs. It is made possible by the fact 
that digital technologies data five behaviors and interactions or transform them into data that can be analyzed and then used to make choices. In the digital landscape, power is unevenly distributed as individual users do not have access to the information these corporations collect about their interactions and behaviors. Such information shapes the way users interact with a certain platform or a service. Users do not receive any economic benefit from their participation in such services. Digital communications like messages, chats or pictures are perceived as being temporary or ephemeral. However, copies and traces of these communications can be duplicated and stored for years without the author's knowledge by the companies. Digital materialism is a recent object of study in media sciences. From a technical point of view, a digital platform like Facebook and Twitter for example is a software environment. Jose van Dijk has proposed that we look at platforms both as cultural constructs highlighting the way they shape sociality and cultural production and also as economic structures focusing on problems of ownership and business models. Some theories of the relation between technology and society see technology as an external force that develops independently of social phenomena. Technological determinism sees technology as an independent force that can determine the development of a society. The characteristics of digital media affect the way in which individuals interact with each other. Another perspective is social construction of technology. This theoretical approach suggests that the development, structure and significance of a technology depends on the strength, needs and values of the social groups that promote and design it. It implies that the evolution of a technology is something in which people participate actively. There is also the co-production of technology and society perspective. It suggests society and technology influence and shape each other. One level continuously influences the development of the other and vice versa. Sociologists use the term affordances borrowed from design and engineering to describe how technologies both enable and limit what users can do with them. Poster defined new media. New media transgresses the limits of the print and broadcasting models by enabling many-to-many -many conversations, enabling the simultaneous reception, alteration and redistribution of cultural objects, providing instantaneous global contact and inserting the human into a machine apparatus that is networked. Commercial transactions were prohibited on the internet until 1991. The internet as popular mass medium coincided with its commercialization and the development of the World Wide Web by Tim Berners-Lee in 1990. This enabled the mass sharing of linked files and provide an accessible way to post personal and commercial content. Till the late 1990s, the internet was synonymous with cyberspace and was viewed as an alternative space that could bypass regulation. The information superhighway was to fix all our political problems from racial discrimination to the ills created by the mass media. The internet was supposedly uncensorable, anonymous and participatory medium. A new set of ideas of community has developed around computer-mediated communication. The core idea is that of a virtual community. It is founded intentionally by people who share a set of similar interests at their own choice or in response to some stimulus, often revolving around certain texts or tropes imported from 
non computer mediated communication venues according to political economy scholars the new media are no different from the old media it is the better of that first acquire and then upgrade the technology and are always ahead of the poor social and information gaps widen rather than narrow and there emerges an information underclass there is a real digital divide that exists there is also a definite trend towards demassification of old media the proliferation of platforms for transmission eats into the mass audience and replaces it with innumerable small and more specialized audiences the digital media and the internet have made the idea of the personal newspaper a realistic possibility thanks for staying along friends as always it was a delight having you here i'll be back with another video very soon till then have a great time